Hi, welcome back to Money, Money, Money. Vishal Dhawan of Plan Ahead Wealth Advisors is still with us and we're talking about how to fund your child's higher education. So we've discussed how to go about saving if you have enough time on your hands. But if you don't, what is the other option? Well, it's an education loan. But before we talk about the nitty gritties of an education loan, how to go shopping for one and so on, Let's discuss whether an education loan is a good loan or not. Uh, Vishal, is this something that you recommend uh, to fund higher education? So I think it's uh, definitely something that can be considered, but one has to do it very, very carefully and prudently because you need to realize that both for parents as well as for children, there is going to be a very material impact on their finances the moment they choose to use a loan. Uh, the interest rates on many of these education loans are actually quite high, uh, especially if you don't get admissions into a very high quality institution. Uh, typically, you know, if you went to a public sector bank, it would be about 10, 11 percent per annum. If you went to a, a private sector uh, bank or a NBFC, anywhere between 11 and 15 percent per annum. So it is expensive. And therefore, you have to be very, very clear that there has to be confidence that at the end of this uh, education, there is an ability to have income uh, which will be able to support that loan repayment back. Um, so clearly, if, if it results in a very high quality education, it is definitely a good uh, sort of loan to have. If it doesn't, then it's going to put you back as a parent either because you've compromised on your retirement or as a child because you're just struggling to pay off the EMI when you start off then I don't think it's such a great idea. Okay. Uh, what are the factors to consider when someone is looking to apply for a loan or shopping for a loan? So a few things uh, very, very clearly. One is, like I mentioned earlier, the course has to be right. Because if you have to be able to pay back a loan, you need to be sure that the kind of salaries that you'll get at the end of that program, because the job prospects are good, are going to be um, sort of uh, worth the expense on the loan. Uh, obviously, if you're going to become an entrepreneur, then you have to think extra hard because you may not have income immediately to be able to support that. So one is the course itself. The second is the rate of interest. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, the rates of interest can be very high. But if you get into a very high quality institution, then those rates are substantially lower. And of course, if you're going overseas, you might also be able to get the benefit of taking a loan in the currency uh, that you're actually going to be paying your fee in, which can happen, again, uh, you know, as an option if you go to a good quality institution. The third thing to keep in mind is how long are you going to take to pay this loan back? Because what ends up happening with repayments is that very often, uh, you know, we tend to believe that we want it to go on longer and longer so that it becomes more affordable. On the flip side, we need to keep in mind that the longer the loan is, the more overall interest you're going to end up paying. And therefore, you want to find a balance uh, if you can. So earlier on, most education loans were only seven years. Now you have loans which go on till 15 years. Um, but you need to keep this you know, very carefully done so that you don't overpay interest as well. Because if you think about a 15-year loan, after you pass out of an higher education, you'll be probably in your mid-30s by the time you finish paying off your loan itself. Uh, the fourth thing to keep in mind is that there is a tax deduction available for eight years, uh, but that, again, should not be the only reason why you take the loan. Uh, that tax deduction is sort of a good thing to happen, but, but uh, you know, try to keep in mind that it's only available for the interest that you pay in the first eight years. Uh, keep in mind also that you will have margins to pay out on these loans, and you will also have a processing fee. Uh, typically, you know, most processing fees will be about 1%. And last but not the least, keep in mind the concept of a moratorium on an education loan, which is essentially the period during which you will get charged interest on the loan. Uh, you know, for example, a lot of public sector banks will charge you simple interest on the loan during that period. So you don't have to pay the EMI for maybe six months or 12 months after you finish your program, but you're still accumulating interest on the loan during that period. And therefore, you're ending up paying a higher amount because of the moratorium. So there are lots of factors to keep in mind before you go ahead and, and say yes to that education loan. 
Okay. Um, Vishal, uh, how should the repayment of an education loan be handled? Do you recommend uh, prepaying? Because you said there is this fine balance between, uh, you know, finishing it off uh, early enough or having other implications. So, uh, do, to what extent is prepayment recommended? It's definitely a recommendation uh, for you to have freedom as a person who's finished his higher education to start doing a lot of other things. Because if you look through the uh, sort of career journey of someone, you would find that you know, you're happier off paying the loan off for the first few years. And then you want to get into other things in your life. Maybe you want to become an entrepreneur. Maybe you want to buy a house. Uh, maybe you want to uh, you know, uh, settle down with a family. So there are lots of other things that will come into play over a period of time. So it's very ideal that as you get bonuses, uh, you use some of those monies to actually pay back money uh, on your loan. Uh, if, you know, you can save money during your program itself by, you know, let's say opting for secondhand books or, you know, technology, which may not have to be the newest technology when you're buying a laptop, um, you know, looking for cheaper housing. A lot of those things can actually help you keep your loans down, or even if you've taken a higher loan, enable you to prepay faster. And I think that's a very, very good thing to do. Uh, last but not the least, I think I would also very strongly suggest that, you know, you should be setting aside payments for loan repayments in a separate bank account so that you don't end up spending it on something else uh, because there is so much of temptation all the time to be able to sort of use the money fungibly somewhere else. Okay. Uh, Vishal, any practical tips you want to share? Because, uh, you know, for uh, somebody who hasn't yet applied for a loan or, uh, you know, just about started saving, my son is still very young. Uh, for people like us, what are the practical tips that you can tell us? So I think one of the things that, uh, you know, doesn't get a lot of attention is the whole bit around opting for scholarships. There's definitely an opportunity there as well. There are scholarships available for both deserving as well as uh, needy students, especially if you get into a very high quality institution. So look for those options. Uh, speak to people who are senior to sort of understand, you know, what are the other ways that you can uh, earn some money while in your program? Maybe it's an internship, maybe it's a part-time job. Uh, there are lots of opportunities available for bright, uh, bright people. Uh, look at your, uh, you know, when, when you're saving, uh, do think very carefully about, you know, how as a parent uh, you want to support the uh, education uh, sort of provisioning because what tends to happen is very often goals tend to compete against each other. Let's say you want to upgrade your home as a parent and there's an education on the other side. Uh, sometimes because the house upgrade is more here and now and the education is out there in the future, there might be a tendency to prioritize the house today and say that, you know, I can always take care of the education later on. And then you might find that you're unshot. Uh, look at bonuses, both for yourself, as well as, you know, when a student starts off to basically, you know, increase these provisions for education. And uh, like always, you know, use all your increments very prudently. I think there is a tendency for expenses to go up with increments. I think it's great if you're provisioning towards education can actually go up every time, um, you know, there is an increment that comes either for you as a parent or or for the student uh, himself or herself. Okay. Uh, Vishal, just one final question before we wrap up, you know, just as a ballpark figure, I mean, I don't know if you have any data on this, uh, but if, say, I want to start saving for my child's education, the only cost uh, that is available to me, the concrete cost is a tuition fees, right? But as we discuss, that it's a very small portion of what I'm going to have to end up paying. So what is that ballpark figure? I mean, tuition fees, uh, fees plus what X should I look to save? I mean, considering so that it is an, a moving target. Correct. So I wouldn't say it's a very small part, but it's it's substantial enough. So what tends to happen is that if you're uh, thinking about the overall picture, uh, you would typically find that in a country like India, assuming you're going to a higher education within the country itself, it's likely that your costs for everything else put together are going to be about 20, 25% and 70, 75% or so will be, you know, other costs, uh, will be tuition costs. If you're going overseas, 
this proportion may be slightly different uh, because the cost of living itself is much higher there. And you might therefore find that about 60 to 70 percent is your tuition fees and everything else comes around with that. So, so I think, you know, you would have to uh, look at what is happening in there. And I think as a parent, the toughest thing to know when you're 10, 15 years out is to know actually whether your child is going to study overseas or going to be studying in a high quality institution in India. But, uh, you know, best to save to the extent that's possible today so that uh, you can look to make that decision later on. Because, you know, this is one of those goals which can neither be delayed nor dropped, right? So best to save for it much in advance. Vishal, thank you very much for joining in and for giving us a lot of these practical solutions as well. With that, we're going to wind up on Money, Money, Money. Thank you very much for watching. Do stay tuned to CNBC TV 18.